All right, guys, what is up? It is not gnomes, unfortunately. This is actually Jasmine, and we are watching a game between Insane, playing uh, what looks to be full faction Savage Tundra, Yetis by these first few deploys, and Nando, who is playing a collective deck, currently with the Dark March Enforcer grabbing his clothes font. And uh, just uh, just as a PSA for those wondering, no, I will not be replacing our good friend Gnomes. Uh, I'm simply offered my services to help share the load, as it were, when it comes to the recordings, since, of course, all of us are uh, busy people with busy lives. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to be testing this out. I'm sorry if my voice is um, offensive to anyone's ears after so long of listening to Gnomes' glorious contralto. But uh, yeah, we have Yetis versus Collective here from these two players on uh, probably one of my least favorite maps of all time, Iron Fist Pass. And judging by the way this Yeti Hound here is positioned, we're about to see why. <laughs> Because, of course, this Dark Martian Enforcer will be uh, getting into the font, thanks to Crushing Charge. However, Yeti Hound, of course, will be able to leap right over that chasm and contest on uh, Insane's turn. And this pretty much happens in every match. If one player has Flying Champions or Bog Hoppers with Leap, or other such abilities that can cross this uh, chasm here. Because it's just such an easy contest. I mean, why wouldn't you, right? It's... I mean, you're denying the, the, the 12 Nora and you're forcing uh, the second player to send their champions up this way instead of towards the mid-fawn fight. So, very annoying to have to deal with. Uh, battling on two fronts if your deck isn't equipped for it, or if you can't reliably remove the encroaching uh, champion from your font soon enough, you're probably just going to slowly but surely lose. <laughs> so on the other side we have Yeti Kurate grabbing this font. And of course, if uh, Nando were to try and do a similar thing, he would actually need a flying champion to get over here, rather than leap, because as you'll notice, these chasm spaces constitute five squares of movement, rather than uh, up here where it's only three. So we have Dracon actually in the mid font. Uh, not, not exactly the best dragon in the game, but honestly, I would say he's fairly underrated, underappreciated especially after the buff to his uh, Revere unit, the Whitestone Gargoyle, makes him uh, a bit more worth considering, especially when you run the cheat build, Purified. Fearsome Hunter can go either way. I personally like uh, Triumphant Roar and Charge, even though it puts him above 90 Nora. It just makes him more of a threat on the board, damage-wise. So we have uh, most likely a Stealthed Relic here. Almost certainly a stealth relic in that font contesting for Nando, since Drake on the way. And I would, yes, I was about to say it's probably a poison trap because I can't really think of any other stealth relics in uh, Forglar Iron Fist that people would want to run. Of course, there are some Pond of Lilies, War of an Acid Trap, but you don't really see those. So we have Insane, or uh, yes, Insane, uh, um, putting down the Grumble Rock to debuff the shit out of that Dracon if he ever decides to move in. Majestic 2, still fairly uh, annoying to deal with when you have no range, as uh, Nando does not. Brutality Barbarian as well, moving in for Nando. Now, the thing is, with this uh, Yeti Hound up in the top font here, uh, insane, uh, Nando is going to be very hard pressed to uh, remove these defenders from mid font simply because like, he has two melee champions going into this uh, Majestic 2 Grumble Rock and uh, if he does want to deploy a ranged unit that's again more Nora that would be spent pushing through mid and not reclaiming this topside. In my opinion uh, whenever I get into these situations on this map I usually just focus on top as much as possible or as much as feasible rather. Um, 
Like I wouldn't have, I would have probably swapped in the Brutality Barbarian and then sent Dracon topside. Uh, just because, like, if you're against, you know, Yeti Painter, Fortify Range Champion, and you have a Brutality Barbarian here who loves uh, melee combat, Berserker, Manic, uh, he can easily close the distance between uh, himself and uh, this Yeti. And uh, the Yeti Painter's defensive uh, compulsion ability won't uh, provide much uh, deterrence when there's only one champion around. Of course, now that there's the Yeti Apostate here as well, kind of have to uh, consider that winning back uh, mid-font probably uh, take more than the Brutality Barbarian in the end. So, <clears throat> Nando deciding to keep Dracon in the mid-font fight. Uh, the relic will, uh, the Grumble Rock will not go down with two hits. You will need two plus uh, a hit from either him or the Brutality Barbarian again. But unfortunately, thanks to the S Savage Tundra font bonus, Brutality Barbarian will not be able to get a hit. Or should I say he wouldn't have been able to get a hit, except Grintmaw Bouncer actually coming in with improved range. He is a warrior, as well as Dracon, so he improves Dracon's range to 1 to 3, allowing him to double hit the relic outside of Majestic 2 range. Very nice. And uh, up top, uh, I believe I heard... no, nope, nothing going on. So just Dark Martian Forcer leaping in, getting hit off onto that Yeti Hound. Just slapping him up, let staking his claim on that font. That Brutality Barbarian manicking in. Not out of uh, double hit range, but mm, it's unlucky that uh, Manic positioned him thusly against the font because I could maybe see some kind of Gale Force or swap play, maybe. Gale Forcing him into the font will deal uh, 18 damage instead of the usual 21 because of the half IS bonus. So could maybe see that Barbarian go down this turn. Eddie Curate moving up. Still a great support unit, even after all of its uh, nerfs and associated nerfs. Snow Shroud used to be extremely oppressive. That cooldown one. Thankfully, it's cooldown two now. And he actually went with Heal Champion one upgraded. Hmm. Probably going as cheap as possible. 58 Nora is a decent enough deal once you've got a uh, quest support ally fully procced. And a Call of the Tundra coming in, so Yeti spell summoning him, and also a Yeti Fang, so that's... Uh, it is a lot of Nora that he's spending to kill that uh, 69 Nora Brutality Barbarian. And of course this, uh, this Conqueror won't be sticking around longer than a turn, but it will let him get the kill. Not the globe, unfortunately, but he'll probably collect that on his following turn, since uh, this conqueror will uh, remain in the way, stopping Dracon from getting at these other champions. So, insane in a very clearly uh, superior position here at the moment. Not only because of his dominance over mid font, but also just because, again, this top. Uh, top, top font battle is also going in his favor. Dark March Enforcer, not uh, the best when it comes to the damage department. Only having uh, a small buff from the collective. And uh, Binding Chains, also not very effective against a champion that can leap. And uh, having combat awareness, preventing the damage portion entirely. So I wouldn't be surprised to see. And, and yes, yeah, see, so the Yeti Hound here, uh, on Insane's next turn, he has uh, another, like, he could abandon this top font and then contest the close font as well, if he wanted to. The, the leap getting him out of range. Actually, Dracon uh, moving up, deploying a second collective here to contest, uh, instead of walking into the font himself. And pop goes the, the Yeti Conqueror. And that apostate is actually very scary now, with uh, Yeti Fang giving it Unleash. So it has a bit of uh, AP gen when there's other Yetis around. 
Bounty Hunter. 15 damage thanks to Protective. And yep, collects the globe. And this collective almost certainly will go down. And I'm assuming the apostate will just uh, hang back for now. Although, I would, I would think that it wouldn't be too bad to just sit it right here. I mean, it has tough, it has two defense, and it has the damage reduction from Hunter IS. So, if he just, if he put it up there with uh, the, uh, no, he doesn't have Starshine. Well, I think if he still put it up there, it would live for uh, at least another turn, and it would force the Bouncer to maneuver around this way if he wanted to contest, eat up a lot more AP. But he's probably playing around sweep, I would say. Since sitting here against this rock, he doesn't want to get swept and potentially killed. So Insane does contest that close font with the Eddie Hound, giving up this font. But it's important to note that um, on the turn that you capture a font like this, like if you're if the opposing champion has left the font and you have a champion in there that captures it, on your turn you don't actually get the Nora that very turn from contesting uh, from capturing the font. You just get the deploy. So he didn't actually get anything from that font this turn yet, which means the Yeti Hound can probably could potentially just leap back to this top font and continue contesting it while while the enforcer is basically overworked having to protect two fonts at once. So we're gonna see the crushing charge getting him into that font. Recapturing it, Fernando. But uh, there's no denying the uh, the Nora advantage and uh, the advantage on the board still very much in Insane's favor here. So it's difficult to say what to do if you're in Nando's position here. I mean, you don't really have the numbers to assault mid with, you know, just Dracon and Grint Maw Bouncer, who also isn't a very uh, offensive champion. Now, Dracon is tanky, but I don't really see him... Oh, ah, uh, yes, I see. So he swept the Dracon. Ah, oh, that was clever. So he swept the Dracon, relocating in two spaces, without Dracon having to spend AP himself, which let him contest and capture uh, Insane's bottom font. He does surrender mid here, but it's still technically an even font trade, one for one. He reclaims his side font, and he managed to deploy an Angel of Nourishment at his top font. So now, it's actually the Yeti Hound who is uh, somewhat overworked, not being able to contest both of these fonts at once. He'll have to make a choice. And with the Bouncer um, coming in for reinforcements here, I would expect him to contest this top side. So, yeah, because like contesting this font, it's a lot easier to defend, of course, since it's closer to the main deployment zone, the shrine. And uh, we do see a Yeti apostate actually coming down from this one with reinforcement too. So he gains uh, a lot of AP from that, lets him contest without uh, Nando actually gaining any advantage from that font, unfortunately for him. And uh, yep, just super buffing that Yeti Apostate with everything he has at his disposal. Insane decides to run it in. Um, I'm thinking uh, he used all the Fuel Rages available, so he won't have enough AP to contest this font with the Apostate. So instead he decides to move in with the Yeti Hound. Mm. Or not. Yep. So he moves back, and uh, the snow trail there is thanks to an Orb of Frostfall, which is somewhere in uh, this area here. Couldn't have put it in the font this turn because IS font bonus prevents relics. And uh, 21 damage hit, actually, under that bouncer. Whew, scary stuff. Definitely would not want to be in Nando's position right now. Now, 1v1, I would think the apostate would actually win that, assuming Nando attacks on the other side of the board, because Protective doesn't actually have a range. So anything, whenever uh, Nando attacks any of these other Yeti, the apostate will get that damage increase. 
up to plus six. And with Bounty Hunter as well. Um, scale armor, I mean, Dracon's fairly tanky, but I mean, he can just put out so much damage with that apostate. And there's spells to consider, like Call of the Tundra again, the one that summons the Conqueror, as well as Gale Force, Ice Storm, things like that. So Dracon will probably eventually lose this fight. Even though he is denying the Nora for now. So we uh, we see a courage here, or I think uh, yeah, the spell's Tales of Valor is the actual name, but the effect it gives is courage on the discreet mob bouncer. And a mark of redemption goes down on two. Huh? Is that snow blinded? Oh no, he did cast it. Okay, uh, the effect just didn't show up. Uh, in the moment. So, yep, they both both of those spells go down onto the bouncer. So we've got sort of super champ v super champ here going on between bouncer and apostate. And apostate actually taking uh, quite some damage in return from that bouncer's double attack. And with unstoppable here, that takes gale force mostly out of the equation. He could technically gale force his own champion into the bouncer and deal uh, damage that way, but Hmm. Unless he actually gets the kill, that's probably not smart. Now, in this case, since the bouncer has held the line... And I don't really see a way for that Yeti Apostate to get a kill anytime soon. Not with six defense, defense from courage plus scale armor. That, that thing's gonna be there a while. So, it could be worth it to just sort of back up Maybe try to get a healing on it but, you know, with the curate and just sort of let it sit there or have him waste a cooldown and, you know, make him move the bouncer after he's already set it up. Uh, Dracon just sort of chilling in that bot font, daring that apostate to come after him. I suspect he will. See, the thing is, Dracon is uh, like 20 Nora, or almost 20 Nora, more expensive than that apostate. So having him, having an 80 Nora champion contest a font against a 66 Nora champion definitely puts the... Uh, takes a little bit of the burn off having his uh, font be contested here. For now, at least. Especially since... Uh, Insane is con still contesting this font with that uh, wonderful Yeti Hound. Is yep, we see Apostate backing out, getting a heal, getting some fuel rages, as well as a little love tap from the bouncer on his way out, thanks to defensive strike. And uh, Keeper of Memories actually moving in now. Personally, I'm not a fan of this champion. I never really have been. I just think he's really expensive for not much benefit. I mean, technically Unleashed Memories can generate you a ton of Nora, but honestly, like, with Frost Amped, he loses a charge at the end of his turns. And Unleashed Memories has a cooldown of five, so by the time he dies, you've probably only used it once. I don't know. He just doesn't seem to, to do very much whenever I play him, but who knows, I could be completely off my rocker wrong, and he could be one of the best ranged units Yeti have. I'm not, uh, I'm not big on playing uh, Yeti personally. Uh, ever really tried with them. I've, I've played Lonks, usually, in my games with Savage Tundra, or Jackai, sometimes. Not too much Yeti, but... Just looking at him on paper, he doesn't seem to offer too much. Angel of Nourishment, getting that uh, dispelling attack onto the Yeti Hound. And barring anything else, I would say that Yeti Hound's days are numbered on his next or, yeah, probably the next turn if he chooses to stay in the font. Hmm. Dracon moving in for hit on that apostate, moving back. Still refusing to surrender his position in the font. And uh, wisely keeping out of double attack range. While also remaining in double attack range uh, 
for the next turn if that apostate does decide to move in. See, if I were if I were insane, I would have just moved in with the apostate right away. Because you want to get that bounty hunter working for you, right? You want to get the hit so that uh, you take uh, you get the damage reduction portion, you get the damage amp, and you know with abominable, I mean. You have a ton of other Yeti out here. You could you could definitely win that 1v1. Dracon, he doesn't really do anything if he's sitting there. So we have Armorer coming out for Nando. More synergy. He is a warrior, so these champions all get the defense increase, being warriors. And yeah, I don't know why <laughs> Angel of Nourishment is actually a warrior. Maybe that's shared with all angels, but... Uh, it doesn't look like a warrior to me. I mean, look at that. that that's not warrior clothing, come on. And uh, first Gale Force of the game, actually. From Insane. Blowing that angel towards these encroaching Yeti. So we'll probably see... Oh yes, the tracker coming in. Or a declare target onto that angel. So anything that attacks her now is going to get 3 AP. And I would expect this to be a kill. The Apostate is going to get Fuel Raged from all these guys. It's got 21 damage now thanks to Protective. And see, this is what Dracon would be having to deal with down bot if Insane decided to move in. But yeah, the, uh, the Painter is going to get a hit. The Angel has been marked, scented by these Yeti, sniffing her out. I mean, just look at her. Like, who wouldn't? <clears throat> what? Uh, anyway, Breath of uh, La Lusa. Lusara, I should say, coming in. So everyone has Domain Snow, Domain Arctic rather, and uh, they get plus one damage from being on snow thanks to Arctic, plus two damage from the Domain, and yep, that angel is absolutely toast. Didn't even have to use the Apostate. So, thanks to that Gale Force, the Yeti Hound will continue to contest here. And uh, down bot side, we do see the Apostate finally moving in. And getting hit onto that Dracon. Now, Dracon can get, can get two hits in return. Uh, I'm wondering if there will be a spell here, like a Hammer Strike, to potentially guarantee a kill on his next turn. Although, single target spells like that are quite dangerous versus Savage Tundra thanks to Snowblind. And of course, if the, the hammer does land, it'll probably just get Cleansing Stormed by Insane. So we see the Bouncer collecting the Angel Globe. Getting a bit of Nora for her death. Always a good thing. And uh, that Mark of Redemption will fade away in two turns, so he'll actually get a nice little refund off of that as well, assuming the Bouncer doesn't die in the meanwhile. And uh, that was a nice play by Insane, uh, switching targets basically, because obviously he wasn't going to kill the Bouncer, so he just redirected his focus onto the Angel instead. So the Eddie Hound does go down, will not get the globe quite yet, thanks to that impeding snow from the Orb of Frostfall. Boglite Crystal actually going down onto Dracon. Interesting. So that gives him a 10 HP heal as well as Life Siphon. So that is absolutely enough to turn the tide of that bot side battle down there. Uh, Postate will get two hits in return, but uh, honestly I think Dracon's going to come out ahead of that thanks to that Boglite Crystal. Hmm. Interesting. So insane. Uh, sorry, insane. Still does have control over mid. It's two fonts to two currently. Um, about to be three fonts to two actually in Nando's favor, assuming that apostate uh, dies, which he won't quite yet. He drops a provincial marker to keep the contest, backing off. Now, see if Dracon had charge here. We might be able to do something, but uh, nope. Took Fearsome Hunter instead. Still not a bad choice of upgrades. Assuming you can get, you can get kills. 
So we've got more uh, snow, um, snow shroud onto that apostate. That apostate is basically the uh, the workhorse of this phalanx, uh, the spearhead, I should say here, for insane. Twenty-five damage, thanks to the protective and all the fuel rages, the domains, and uh, two extra thanks to Hunter IS. Though I'd expect him to... Well, these, these champions are all fairly tanky. A lot of defense. A lot of defense abilities. He's going to charge into that bog hopper. With the grumble rock coming down. Ah, Majestic 2 is so annoying. Hate Majestic. Hate having to deal with it. He's got no range now to get, to, uh, get around that. And all the ice as well is slowing him down. Four speed... Four speed. See, I think, uh... Hmm. Might have been worth it to just, uh... Put the apostate in and maybe take a few hits at the shrine with the, the Keeper of Memories and the Painter. Because, I mean, what can what can Nando really do about that, right? Like, if he moves, like... It's good that he's contesting the font, but I really don't see a way for him to deal with this, uh this apostate here. Bouncer is distracted. No sweeping, no holding the line going on. Does manage to deploy a repeater. These things are really nice. I, um, I played a bit of Tortons myself, and uh, the combination of Punish plus Sentinel, very potent when you're, uh, when you're up against uh, a lot of melee or... Um, you know, in situations where you want something to cover, like your own champions. Like, because sent because Punish, see, Punish will trigger off of Sentinel, so you basically only get one attack each of all your champions, in addition to the damage you sustain yourself from the Sentinel attack. Very nice bit of self-synergy there. And, uh, once the, uh, the Split Faction buffs come rolling in, in, uh, soon, TM, Maybe I'll bust out the Tortons again, and uh, we'll see how well they perform. They're, I'd say they're decently close to being viable, as they are now. If not, uh, at least a B-tier deck in their own right. So Dracon, uh, being a 2x2 two two that he is, has to maneuver around that font to get at the banner. He could get a hit on it now, but it's probably safer to just conserve his AP. I'd probably move up one more. Just, just because, you know, you don't want to be against, uh, like, against the font versus ST, Gale Force, you know. But this way he does stay out of attack range of the Apostate. Kicks the turn back to Insane, and... Uh, he probably has the kill on this Enforcer. Six defense plus tough one is very strong, but Abominable is also very strong. Uh, he's, he's, hmm, he's going for the Bouncer. Interesting. Eight defense on the Bouncer. But, like I said, that Scented. Extremely uh, potent ability there, boosting his damage by one for all friendly Yeti. Of course, we can't forget about the Tracker. Stealthing, thanks to Hidden Arctic. Scenting again for the Enforcer, fueling the rage of that Apostate, and Apostate will get two hits here. Boosted by one, two, three, four, five, six. And I, yeah, I believe it counts itself, so seven. But like I said, he only gets one hit, thanks to the Punish Sentinel combination from the Repeater. Whereas he would have gotten two hits, and I believe, uh, no, he would not, or, no, yeah, he would not have killed that Enforcer. He would have been two damage short. So Enforcer lives to collect that globe and uh, potentially leap in here for a nice little uh, binding chains on four champions before it dies. Keeper Memories oraing his own forces. And yep, there goes the binding chains. Ensnaring everybody. Armor maybe going to collect that globe, although armor is uh, does have easy target. Not really something you'd want against uh, 
these arranged champions here. We have Dracon taking down that banner, reclaiming that bottom font. Uh, and so, Yeti Curate only with heal champion one. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really expect Apostate to recontest versus that Dracon. He would definitely die. Maybe put down another relic, but I think at this point you're, you're, you'd really want to focus on uh, this top side up here. You were insane. Because if you can push forward into here, then I mean Dracon on his own can't really do anything to you. Like if you like if you were to capture this font, just take away from the armor and you know the Torton, like the armor can't do anything to you, right? It's it's three damage. <laughs> so it's really just the repeater that's defending this font. And uh, the enforcer. Tanky, but still killable. And uh, it's worth noting that charge here on these ranged champions will allow them to uh, engage with the Enforcer if they choose to. I believe Declare Hunted is one turn off cooldown. So he'll have that available soon as well. We do have a Deadeye coming out for Nando. Hunting down that Yeti Kurate and then stealthing up. So a nice little back and forth game here, actually. Fonts uh, being traded. Currently three fonts to two for Nando. Managing to push back the uh, the advance of these Yeti quite, quite skillfully. Reclaiming his font and managing to hold on. Now, Yeti Scout coming in. Probably not what Insane would have liked to deploy. I'm assuming he would have preferred something a little more uh, combat-oriented, rather than the uh, cheap support. But he probably wanted the Nora for that Cleansing Storm, and oh, wow. What a killer poison trap from Nando. Draining everyone's AP. Three champions. So we've got Curry here, coming in for heal mass. Uh, the, they're all full HP, but that poison trap basically cost insane an entire turn because now like everyone just kind of sitting there no ap nothing to do and aura again doing more damage here to uh, insane zone champions now i don't see nando getting any kills off of that poison trap but it did buy him some time Binding Chains uh, still on cooldown since Enforcer didn't actually take any hits. And Dracon is actually still uh, able to contest this font here. Eddie Scout is deployed here, so he could just walk in here if he wants. And that's probably why he, uh, Yeti Scout wasn't really the best choice. Because uh, Hidden Arctic means that he stealths up. Now, and normally that would have stopped or, like, the deploy would have stopped Dracon from contesting without a relic. But since that Yeti did stealth, Dracon doesn't engage, and so he can just walk into here against uh, this curry. So it'll basically be just uh, apostate. Now, curate. Uh, no, sorry, it doesn't have freeze. It's crystallize on the Yeti curry here. This one having snow shroud. Hmm. So we see that Deadeye moving in, thanks to the Orb of Frostfall trail. Still not sure where that is. Uh, I'm betting it's probably in the font or around here. Mm. So Deadeye moving into the font, presumably since the trail stopped here. And then Enforcer uh, retreating for a Font of Restoration heal. Nice. And an armorer just going to keep buffing that thing's defense. Nine defense plus tough one right now on that enforcer. And honestly, even with the abominable and all the damage buffs from like commander and such, that enforcer is going to be a pain in the ass to take down. And, and see, every time you hit it, it's just going to reduce the cooldown of binding chains, making him uh, more able to deal. Uh, some nice AoE damage and ensnare. 
So against all odds, seemingly, the tides have been turning in favor of Nando. And uh, the Deadeye actually manages to take the font away from Insane. I was expecting the... Uh, hmm. Not for sure the apostate would uh, still be lurking there somewhere. But we have the Declare Target coming down onto the Enforcer. Hmm. I would have probably just gone for the Armorer, to be honest. I mean, he's much less defense. He has easy target for your range. Hmm. Call off the Tundra coming in. And, uh... Yeah, he does, he does do some good damage. 12, 12... And a 14 damage hit. Wow. Yeah. And pop, there it goes. Leaving the globe, but he does get a kill onto one of Nando's key champions here. Gosh, that, that Abominable just gives so much damage. I mean, that Enforcer had 10 damage reduction from basically everything. And Insane just plowed through it like it wasn't even there. Crazy. Yeti are, a, Yeti are a very terrifying deck once they get rolling, because Abominable basically gives them all Surge every two turns, in addition to the, uh, the anti-stealth capabilities. So you basically, you can't really play, like, sneaky against them, because they'll always know where you are. I've had my plans foiled many a time, playing Egg Bombs, getting stuck matched against Yeti. Sad days, sad days when that happens. Of course, I'm not expecting much sympathy from people who don't appreciate the majesty of the Egg Bomb Shrine Kill. I know who you are. So we've got Repeater here, sort of a sitting duck, really, against uh, these encroaching Yeti. The Conqueror sort of in the way um, forcing him, like, for, uh, forcing the Repeater to f focus uh, the Conqueror instead, thanks to the, uh, the Psychic Compulsion, so that Repeater can't actually hit anything this turn, except for whatever is closest to it, in this case, uh, the Conqueror. And actually, Insane, uh, moving in with that Painter, denied Nando the Globe that would have been captured by the Enforcer. Sort of adding insult to injury there, if you ask me. But, on the bright side, for Nando, he does manage to maintain that mid-font, actually keeping the, his font advantage, deploying uh, Commander Nisk, the, uh, the limited edition version of Valdekai Shield Warden, sort of flexing in his own right. Not a rune that many people would, uh, would actually own at this point. Damage Shield and Bold. Usually I, I see these things with uh, the Speed upgrade. The one that gives plus, uh, plus one Speed and Mobility until it's attacked three times. Uh, the name escapes me. I'm such an old man. Give me a break. I'm retired, basically. So, we've got Repeater just sort of backing off biding his time here, and Silver Clan Hoplite being deployed. Rarely see this guy in play either. He, I've always thought he had potential to be good. Sort of like a, uh, a linchpin for the Construct Phalanx, backed up by Robo Dogs and, you know, Grobles and such. Hold the line plus uh, Enduring Aura makes him uh, fairly tanky. Regen, thanks to Complex Machine, but here he actually has Throw Javelin, and he is also a warrior, so he benefits from the uh, the synergy provided therein. Hmm. We have Apostate contesting here, along with Crystallize from the Yeti Curry, making it safe from damage for a turn. Probably a smart idea. Dracon can't hit it, and sort of swinging the Dracon around here to deal with these Yeti. Yeti Druid. Another support champion, but uh, 
Still a very potent one. Divert. Cleanse. Crystallize. Nice suite of abilities. And Yeti Painter actually doing a melee charge attack onto this armor instead of hitting it from range. Which works out though. He does get the kill. Maybe the globe as well. And Keeper Memory sacrificing... I think it had like 20 charges at this point. So... Uh, draining, uh, not draining, but uh, just generating a bit of its cost back. I suppose once you've got it to that many charges, it pays for itself. Most games I see these days don't even get, get long enough to, to really make it worth it, in my opinion. But uh, on a game like, in a game like this, where it's constant back and forth, things are dying everywhere, gets a lot of charges. It, it does end up doing a lot of work. And uh, that orb of, uh, the orb of Frostfall actually getting detected here by, uh, yeah, Snap, Snaptooth Deadeye having detect, I think it's rank 2 base. So we have Deadeye lurking, probably impeded by all this snow. Nando trying to scope out a kill on something, presumably. And uh, if I were him, I would probably move into this font with Dracon, sort of swap out the Nisk. I'm actually kind of surprised that Dracon didn't, didn't contest uh, this top font when he was able. I think if he would have done that, hmm, he would have been in a better position, because see now, this, uh, this scout is just going to grab this font back for Insane, keep up the Nora advantage, and now see it's he's two fonts to one again. When he could have been uh, at two fonts to one, or sorry, two fonts to none, in his own favor. So in comes Bloodmane Ravager. Now, this thing in, in Laos can get pretty scary, but uh, in a collective deck, collective slash warrior slash mix deck like this, uh, its potential is a little bit less limit, uh, a little bit more limited. Although, thanks to Impatient and Leap, it's definitely going to be able to keep up with these ranged champions. Deadeye hitting twice, Deep Wounds taking an awful toll on this Keeper of Memories. He does have mobility, thanks to the earlier Breath, spell, so he could theoretically escape this way, but, and then just, you know, leaving behind the, uh, the snow trail to impede these melee units from catching him. Tartan Repeater, still lurking behind the shrine there, laying down his suppressing fire. And uh, this globe, Painter should be able to grab that and then sort of back up. Now if he has a, if Insane has another Gale Force here, he could maybe do a cheeky little Gale Force play, galing his Curate into this top font, which uh, would be a sort of a sore blow to Nando, since he would have no way to recapture it. But instead he's going for a, another Call of the Tundra. I think that's the third one, third one this game? Summoning down another Conqueror, and I'm assuming he's going to try and get the kill onto the newly deployed Ravager. Since that's probably the squishiest champion in play for Nando at the moment. That's a reachable, of course. Ideally, it would be the Deadeye, but, uh, yeah. So we'll have to back out one with that memories. And oh, there is a Gale Force there actually. Doing some crazy damage. It's a double Gale. 21 damage to each, or sorry, 18 damage to each of these. And then a hit from Painter. Hit from memories. And a hit from the Conqueror. Just annihilating that Bloodmane Ravager and bringing this, the Hoplite down to 5 health. Although in return he does lose the Keeper of Memories to the uh, the Sentinel hit, leaving uh, actually two nice fat Nora globes there to be collected by Nando. One for the Nisk, 
and then uh, probably probably one for the repeater. He does still have that font of restoration sitting there, uh, holding that font for him. And actually, if that thing lives, uh, probably another two turns, I think, he will be able to get uh, a heal off a second time, which is exceedingly rare. Usually the font of restoration only sticks around long enough to heal once. But if he manages to get a second healing out of that, that'll really pay for itself. And uh, there's the IS version of Breath of... Uh, the Breath spell from Savage Tundra. Makotomize. Basically doing the same thing, just for rock. Of course, the problem is <laughs> he cast Makotomize, but Orba Frostfall is around, so he doesn't actually get the domain rock buff if he moves with his champions. And he's futilely trying to kill that Conqueror, even though it will only last a turn. I suppose a Fearsome Hunter debuff might be enough to save his, his key champions here. We got a Providence coming down for the repeater. So holding the line, making him unstoppable, giving him some range. Well, the defensive strike. So the uh, the Orb of Frostfall taking a hit as well from the Nisk. Dracon maintaining that contest. And insane, uh, understandably, a bit uh, a bit worried about moving into onto that Dracon with these champions here. Doesn't really have the damage to bring it down yet. Great. Healing him up a tad. And a tad more. So we have Abominable coming down onto the Dracon. Will he actually try and get the kill? Hmm. Honestly, I don't see it happening. <laughs> Dracon, three defense, full 63 HP, as well as scale armor. And even if he doesn't get a kill, uh, deep freeze. Hmm. I wonder if that'd be worth it. I mean, I guess it does give him the font, meaning Repeater will have to move from its position where it's held the line just to get in there. See, if, N if Nisk had uh, mobility, he would, uh, the mobility upgrade, he would have been able to walk into that font no problem. But instead, Repeater's going to have to do it. And we've got Dracon taking some damage. Actually, pretty good damage, just from uh, that hit. But of course, with Life Siphon, him being uh, able to hit twice next turn, most of it will be regenerated. And uh, we have the Curate, as well as the Painter, getting hits off onto the Nisk. And unfortunately, thanks to Compelled, the repeater does not actually get any sentinel hits off because the closest thing to it is the grumble rock. Four spaces as opposed to six spaces and five. So that's a shame. And Insane does claim that font for himself. Actually, pretty impressed with how uh, well N Nando has managed to hang on in the face of this Yeti assault here. Usually, when you uh, when you see collective decks, um, it's sort of just like a, a mishmash of uh, of champions. But he's actually uh, worked in some nice synergy here with the warriors and uh, Providence as well, giving uh, bonus effects to warriors as well as Laos. So dropping a second collective into the font to contest, probably, uh, probably a smart play, I would say. Rather risk the 25 Nora than, uh, you know, have your champions be at risk. When you're sort of behind in, uh, in champions like Nando is, you basically want to do everything you can to keep the ones you do have safe. 
because without, I mean, without them, it's, it seems like an obvious thing to say. I mean, like without them, though, like if if Nando wasn't taking such uh, careful precautions with his champions, he would have no chance here in this game. But the way things are going, he does still he does still have uh, some things going for him. He has that Dracon in the font. It's going to be a real pain to take down. Uh, he, he has uh, maintained control of this top font for some time, so he is generating some Nora. No more Yeti Hounds or anything leaping over here. And uh, we see a Barbarian Exemplar coming down. Commander, again, for the Warriors. And Samir the Brave deciding to come into play as well. Smashing up, smashing up that uh, Yeti Tracker kill. Dracon, as expected, healing back. But uh, I feel like Nando has um, basically going, uh, going all in now with the, uh, the Transfigure and what looks to be his final deploy for a while. Sensing the encroaching threat from uh, these Yeti that are moving up. Deciding to give it one last Valiant Stand. Dracon uh, looking to be in a, a little bit of trouble here, actually, thanks to the Yeti Fang that comes down. So Fuel Rage going to ensure a double hit from this apostate. And big spooky Yeti Ice Lord coming in here as well. So everyone's feared. Everyone has uh, damage reduction on them. See 9 damage, 18 from the Druid. And uh, so 19, uh, sorry, 22, and 3 plus scale armor, and double 18 er from the Yeti Apostate, securing the kill on that Dracon. So Insane reclaiming that mid font, Dracon having fought valiantly, leaving behind a fat globe for Insane's collection. And uh, that painter just walking right into that top font. So font count is now four to zero, leaving the curate contesting there. And with that um, that unspeakable greeting from the Ice Lord, as well as the majestic Grumble Rock, uh, I'm expecting that curate to live. I don't really see a good way for Fernando to take it down this turn. Probably going to see a divine healing maybe onto Nisk. It's possible. And then have Nisk uh, contest mid. Grab that Dracon globe for himself. That repeater is still compelled. Hmm. I didn't think it lasted. I thought it was four turns. Hmm. Can you really use that? Has it really been only three turns? Seems like it's been a lot longer than that. But yes, uh, Repeater still compelled, can only hit the closest thing. And Curate taking some damage here. Not enough to kill. And of course, being only 58 Nora, at this point in the game for Insane, you have a massive Nora advantage in fonts and having not transfigured. So losing the, losing the Curate at this point, just to contest, probably worth it. We have Repeater moving in, keeping everyone in a nice little bunched AoE range for Enduring Aura, Commander. Marsh Song goes down, Fernando, so he'll be generating a little bit at the end of his turns. Probably more of a desperation ploy at this point, I'm betting he is quite short on Nora. So Apostate eating that globe, Shaman coming down, more healing, swap two as well, get things into range. And I would think Insane should have the Nora for a second deploy. Maybe something topside. Maybe another cheap uh, little Yeti Scout, Yeti Spirit perhaps. Although after the changes, Yeti Spirit is more of a, a Frost Amp champion now, as opposed to a, a Yeti one, although you could technically run it in both. 
Personally, I'm glad to have seen the last of it. I did not like playing against 40 Nora Yeti spirits. <laughs> Major pain in the ass, especially on maps like this, where they could just walk over the chasm, sit in your font all game. So these Yeti are going to be biting their teeth out on this Commander Nisk for the moment, having him scented. Not quite enough for a kill, but it seems like Nando is going to be recapturing this font for himself. And, uh, hmm. So avatars do not get the collective buff, unfortunately. Has to be deployed from the room dock. And uh, there we see the divine healing onto the Nisk. Healing him back up. By a substantial amount, actually. And that crate is certainly toast. Chomped by that dead eye. So he does regain this font. Although. Hmm. That's a lot of Yeti that he's going to have to deal with. I mean, with with four fonts uh, belonging to Insane here. I wouldn't expect him to last too much longer, unless he pulls something completely out of his ass. Not sure what that thing could be at this point in the game, but if he's playing on, it means maybe he sees something that I don't. So, Repeater, taking his stand by sitting, Rosa Parks style. Just gonna sit there with his uh, little defensive strike, hold the line up. Daring that apostate to approach him, as well as these other Yeti. So, with him being unstoppable now, that actually does make him immune to the imbue stun from Yeti Shaman. So, he won't be... Uh, will be fairly safe in that regard. However, this exemplar, not so much. And there we see an avalancher coming in. 70 HP, balanced. 70 HP, 71 Nora. Nisk taking another hit. Not too much this turn, thanks to Bold. A little bit, a little bit late for Avalanche, I would say. Usually, you'd want Escalation champions out early, but maybe he didn't deploy, or maybe he didn't draw them. Better late than never, though. And we see more healing going down, more fueling of the rage, and there is the defensive strike. However, defensive strike does not trigger punish. Uh, or sorry, no, he walked in with um, Apostate there. Or uh, Curate, I should say. Which actually did. I was wondering, yeah, that, that should have worked. <laughs> that should have triggered Punish, he, but he actually walked in with Curate and not the, uh, the Apostate. And, oh wow, that's a swap onto the Yeti Scout. So, mm, I'm pretty sure this is just an Observer bug. I can't click on this. But uh, the Yeti Scout is now currently where that uh, Exemplar was. And Exemplar going to be going down to these hits. And yep, there we see the Scout fueling the Rage, letting him collect that globe, and uh, spending his last 1 AP to walk into the font. So nicely played by Insane there. And uh, Insane's victory. So there we go. One hour long game. Very nice back and forth. Uh, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.